All right, hello everybody. Today I wanted to talk uh, about biasing. I had some comments that were really good in this last video about uh, the method that I was using was very dangerous. I, I don't consider it dangerous. It is higher risk to your amp if you're not careful and do it in a very you know careful way. I was able to make it a, a little easier and be a little bit less cautious because the design of this amp was actually pretty nice, and I will cover that in a little bit. But I first wanted to just generally talk about the right ways, there's different ways to bias different kinds of amps. We'll talk about uh, the different types of biasing that you do on an amplifier and when you need to do it and when you don't, etc. But um, there are two main types of biasing of an amp. There's a cathode bias and there is a um, fixed bias. Fixed bias um, so can still sometimes be adjustable. There'll, there'll be a way that in some amps that are already set to be adjustable, like that um, orange was. It had an adjustable potentiometer. I could adjust the resistance that the negative bias came through the, to the grids of the tubes with. Uh, but um, they basically, um, there are different ways of bias or of calculating the bias on pretty much any amplifier. But if we look at and talk about first the, let's, let's first talk about that cathode bias. An AC30 is a classic uh, amp that uses a cathode bias. Uh, and the way that works is all of the cathodes of these four power tubes, the EL84s, are tied together to a 50 ohm resistor and then a, I think it's a 250 microfarad capacitor. So uh, this is actually generally fairly hot and it does um, push those tubes if that's part of the tone of the AC30. But if you wanted to dial that kind of put back a little bit, the way you could do that is if you would have to effectively replace this resistor. So you would get your multimeter, put the negative on the bottom end and the positive up by the side where it's coming out of the tubes. And you would, with the power off of course, measure that. Get an exact measurement as precise as you can, you know, 51.35, whatever, you, whatever your multimeter will do. Write that down. Then you will leave the multimeter around that and turn the amp on and let it come up to warm up. And you have to give it sometimes a good few minutes to really warm up and, and sit there and idle. Uh, and you want the volumes down to zero always when biasing because you want it in idle bias, not when it's being played and being pushed because that will bounce the bias up and down as it's being played. Um, but the uh, now you will measure a, a voltage drop across that 50 point whatever ohm resistor. And then it's just a simple math thing of to calculate the current current is equal to the um, voltage divided by the resistance, and that's all that is. And, and you'll do the same thing with fixed bias calculations as well. Um, there's different ways to do that as well, but effectively that's just the math. It's that simple. You, you have two measurements, you do the math, and you will know what current is running. In this case, that would be the current for four tubes, because there are four different tubes all running to that, that common cathode. So you'd want to then divide that by four, and that's how much on average each, each particular tube was doing. Look up the data sheet, see what the max current should be for that tube, and, and then calculate it from there. Now, um, the way you get the max current, sometimes the data sheets, I don't think they know, well, always say the max current they will sometimes say the max power dissipation and that is calculated from the current times the voltage at the time and the voltage would be the plates which would be you'd have to take a measurement after with the power off reconnect to the anodes and measure the plates uh, current um, but this does the there is a slight disadvantage to this because all um, of the the screen and the cathode, or the screen and the plate are running through. Mallory's talking, guys, so I apologize for that. But the screen and the anode will both be running through that. So you get your 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 anode, your anode, and the screens both kind of tend to create some current draw that goes through the cathode. So uh, what I remember reading and understanding is that's generally only about five milliamps. So it's not major. But the other good thing is that really means if you account, if you don't account for that, you're actually giving yourself a little bit less. You, you can't over bias that way as easily because you've got five milliamps of extra current that isn't running through the plate, so you're not pushing it as hard. But effectively, you could also just subtract five milliamps from your measurement, and then and then from there get your power dissipation. So you know if you were running at 300 volts, 300 times whatever you calculate as the milliamps would give you the power dissipation, and then you would be able to calculate what the plate dissipation was as well. So and again, you'd need to divide that by four to get the, for a four tube amp like this. The other type is a fixed bias. The fixed bias is called fixed because it's it's set in a way that that bias has a fixed negative voltage coming into the, the screens. And that is a typical thing like this uh, this baseman. You will see here there is a, um, we'll kind of come down here, There's the, in the baseman that I had before I modded it to the Dumbbell, it had this 10KL balance, but we had negative 57 volts coming in right here into that, and then that goes off and into uh, the, the screens of the, the sets of tubes. Um, it was not adjustable per the um, that negative voltage, but you could adjust, uh, um, balance the tube. Say say this pair happened to be drawing a little bit more than the other, you could balance it out. I modified it with a dumbbell to make that instead be a type where I could adjust the bias itself directly. But um, that is this other type. Uh, another type of amp, obviously, that does that was this one, which is the um, 
orange that I showed in the last video, and it does have an adjustable potentiometer here that sends the negative bias out. So, you know, it's bringing in a voltage off of the transformer, you've got some capacitors and resistors, and then this, this potentiometer allows you to change how much current it is allowing to come through. Uh, and the way I measured it, we're going to come in, we're going to zoom in, uh, and I'll tell you why this was a little bit safer in general, was I was connecting right here to the yellow, white, and black tabs. These were big, thick, obvious tabs. Uh, and they were not, and I wasn't connecting to pin three of the, this uh, of these tubes or something similar to get this measurement. I was just connecting directly to those tabs. So one of the comments he made, which is absolutely correct, if you're not careful, you could bump uh, pin three and two together, and two is the heater, and you could arc and damage the tube or damage other components of the amp. And so uh, you shouldn't ever actively be switching components or uh, at that high voltage range in and out of the amp while it's powered on. The only reason I felt safe doing that was because these were big, thick tabs and they were nowhere near the tubes themselves. So, um, you know, I still think that it is not the wisest choice to be doing that. I don't feel too uncomfortable doing it, but you should always be careful when doing those kinds of things. If you are dealing with the direct pins of the tubes that you need to measure it on, always shut the amp off in between changing these connections and use the appropriate type where it will clamp down well on that pin and you can clearly see that it's not touching anything else before you power on the amplifier or you can do damage. Um, that is what the method is called, the transformer shunt method. And you saw me covering that at the time. That is also covered here in this in the train wreck pages uh, that I mentioned briefly. But effectively, that, that method is very accurate because it is literally measuring the current coming out of the anode and then through the out to the output transformer's side. So that is the purely just the anode current. So it is the most precise way of measuring the anode current through each half of that transformer on the push-pull side. So if you're having a quad, you're still only averaging between the two at a time, and you can measure the current from each half. Uh, but if it was only two, amp two tubes, say a 50 watt, you'd be able to measure two very precisely and get the exact current for each tube. Um, the um, Ultimately, I think if you guys want to read this, I'll put this down in the link below. Uh, the Trainwreck pages are a great resource to read through because Ken Fisher of the Trainwreck Amps um, fame wrote a ton of great stuff in this about different types of amps, how they work. This just is the area I wanted to cover is just how to bias an amp. Now, there are other ways as well. Uh, I mentioned how to do it for fixed bias, but a um, even if this wasn't a fixed or a variable resistor, in theory, you could modify any amp that didn't have that kind of a setup to do so. And I have a video, if you look back, where I was doing so on my Fender Blues Deluxe. The original reissues of those did not have an adjustable bias. I just modified by putting in a, sm a very small resistor in line because you don't want to always have a minimum resistance so the, the bias doesn't go into runaway. And then I had a variable resistor so that I was able to adjust the resistance value between two ranges to get myself into an adjustable bias configuration. But effectively, another way is, if you don't want to put in that kind of potentiometer, you can also just get, measure that resistor, its value, find out where you're at, and then replace it with a resistor that is higher or lower to try and adjust that. And you have to kind of do the math each time to try and figure out, um, well, what happens if I, you know, right now I'm measuring this resistor, this voltage, this, that, how do I adjust it? Well, let me try increasing my resistance, what happens? And you can do the math very quickly and figure that out. But I think, ultimately, that should uh, be something that will make sense the more you play around with it as well. Um, you could um, also, if you do have an amp that has a variable potentiometer, you could measure the resistance between uh, the entry point and the wiper, where it's at, where it's good, and then adjust it down a little cooler and see where that resistance is and see if it's going up or down. That's a good kind of experiment to get the feel for it yourself as well. So uh, I do appreciate the feedback that was given about that. I do agree that it is a, a more dangerous way. It is more risky to the amplifier, but I think that if you know what you're doing, you do it carefully, you shut the amp on and off in between every measurement you take to make sure that you're not risking, you know, arcing somewhere or touching things you shouldn't, then you're in good shape. I tend to be the kind of guy that goes and just types to probe all over the place because I'm curious and want to find out, and it may bite me at some point, and so I would definitely warn you to be careful about that as well, but uh, do uh, make sure that you understand what you're doing whenever you do this kind of stuff and how to do it. So... Please give me uh, any comments you have about this as well. I'd like to have a little bit more discussion in the comments of anybody else that thinks that maybe I'm crazy for doing it this way. Uh, but uh, also if there's any other kind of ways that you guys have done biasing that I've missed. Uh, oh, and there was one other way that I didn't mention is that some people will literally just disconnect the center tap right here and then put their meter multimeter in um, in current reading mode, you know, in milliamps, and then connect it in line. That way is a little higher risk because you can, if you do things wrong, blow your multimeter up or damage other kinds of things because it is in line with the current flow of the amplifier. That is why this kind of transformer shunt method is a little bit more safe. So, but at any rate, that, that please do let me know what you think about all this discussion. Uh, please have let's have a great discussion about this in the comments as well, and uh, give me a like, a subscribe, a thumbs up, and I'd be happy. Thanks.